so now it's my pleasure to introduce to Laura Montoya. She is the founder and managing partner at ASEL Impact, including uh, ASEL AI Institute and Latinx in AI. So Laura, she has been a champion in the Latinx community, trying to have uh, more AI representation. So uh, this project of the summit was uh, was born in in Europe's 2018. Yes. So yeah, it's thanks to her that everything started. So uh, so she's not going to talk about Latinx, but she's going to talk about uh, government artificial intelligence preparedness of Latin America and the Caribbean. So thank you, Laura. Thank you. Good afternoon. I hope everyone is enjoying the weather here in Boston as much as I am. Um, <laughs> today, uh, I'm going to be talking about the evolving potential of artificial intelligence in Latin America. Uh, for those who have not met me, my name is Laura Montoya. I'm the founder of Excel AI Institute and the Latinx and AI Coalition. I work with several other organizations as well in evolving capacities to really further uh, the development of technology for social impact. If you'd like to connect with me, you can do so uh, on by email, Twitter, LinkedIn, or on my website as well. So obviously there has been this uh, global AI race that has been happening around the world for countries in, for the development and research of artificial intelligence technology. The United States and China have been leading this race, um, currently with United States in the lead, uh, thanks to the executive order uh, on maintaining artificial intelligence leadership in artificial intelligence that was released by the Trump administration. And uh, China is, of course, coming in in close second um, due to their uh, next generation of artificial intelligence development plan. They are followed closely, of course, by countries in the European Union, uh, the UK, of course, which has invested over a billion dollars, uh, and, of course, Germany has also recently uh, put out an AI-made-in-Germany uh, strategy. And, of course, uh, we have to mention Canada, uh, whose pan-Canadian AI strategy is being led by the CIFR organization. So where does that leave Latin America in the global artificial intelligence race? And why is it important to highlight these other uh, government efforts when talking about uh, developing countries? Well, it's obvious that a lot of the investment capital and policies that take place uh, within these other countries and governments have a major effect on Latin America and their development in the future. So this past year, we actually published a research paper, uh, which was the Government AI Readiness Meta-Analysis for Latin America and the Caribbean. This was published in IEEE's Society on Social Implications of Technology. Uh, myself and Pablo Rivas of the Latinx and AI Coalition uh, worked on this study. So we wanted to look at uh, research that was published by the IDRC and Oxford Insights. Um, specifically, they developed a ranking on the AI readiness of governments globally. And they looked at four different metrics in order to develop this ranking, specifically uh, government use of artificial intelligence, access to digital and public services, uh, education within the country, and then also investment, including the number of startups uh, that were available. Within their ranking, uh, no Latin American and Caribbean countries were in the top 20. And within the top 50, uh, there was only Mexico and Uruguay. So we wanted to perform a meta-analysis to dive deeper into Latin American and Caribbean countries and figure out their unique needs and opportunities for AI development by governments. As you can see in the table here, uh, Latin American and Caribbean countries, about half of them, uh, scored about uh, as high as the global average of 4.0, as indicated by a line on the table. And the Latin American and Caribbean average, uh, which was 3.682, is not far be behind that global average as well. For our meta-analysis, we specifically wanted to look at different economic metrics, including the unemployment rate, the gross domestic product per capita purchasing power parity, the education level, and the cost to hire an AI researcher um, for AI development. None of these metrics were included in the original ranking. So first, uh, with the unemployment rate, 
Um, one comparing this against uh, the government AI readiness ranking or the GARE as I'll refer to it for the rest of this talk. Uh, it might first appear uh, that they are correlated um, because all of the countries that rated uh, above a 4.0 on the GARE um, also have very low unemployment rates. But of course, there are countries with low unemployment rate that also um, rated very low on the GARE as well. For example, uh, Cuba uh, is one of those countries. Now, why is it important to highlight unemployment with the use of artificial intelligence or automation? Well, when you're going to develop artificial, intellig artificial intelligence or automation within a country, that might affect your unemployment rate because people are going to have a fear of loss of jobs with this automation technology being implemented. And the use of this technology will also take away access to low-skilled um, positions that are available for the majority of the population. So in that case, unemployment rates will also increase. Now of note, a very low unemployment rate, below 5%, for example, is actually a sign of a government and those positions uh, not being developed very effectively. So the cost to employ those workers uh, is actually going to be higher than the potential production uh, that those workers will output. Now we also looked at the GAIR uh, as compared to the GDP PPP uh, for a country. And with the GDP uh, PPP, this is the GDP purchasing power parity for those that are not familiar with it. Um, specifically, that looks at the purchasing power of uh, government and its citizens as compared to the population size. In this graph, the population size is indicated by the size of the circles. Um, now, the GAIR and the population size are not directly uh, correlated either because the small countries, are, can, um, small countries can rank just as highly on the GAIR as uh, countries with a, a very large uh, population size. But it is interesting uh, to note uh, which countries rated very highly um, on the GAIR and the GDPPP versus those uh, that did not. Uh, for example, countries such as the Bahamas or Trinidad, which have a very small population size and a very high GDP PPP, also rated very lowly on uh, the government AI readiness ranking. This is due to them having one uh, very highly specialized economy, for example, uh, the tourism industry, which does not have a lot of potential for artificial intelligence uh, implementation. Next, we look at uh, the government AI readiness ranking as compared to overall education of the country. And this was developed um, specifically to look at the overall education of adults and future potential education of children. Um, in the GARE, they only specifically looked at uh, the current technological skills of citizens within each country. Now, overall, Latin American and Caribbean countries do have fairly high uh, education levels. And specifically, they actually develop more academic uh, researchers in the areas of AI than other uh, countries globally, uh, which is very interesting of note. Um, but oftentimes, uh, those researchers or those with very high technological skills will actually leave uh, their countries of origin in order to seek uh, potential new job opportunities or resources that are not available uh, within their own country of origin. And this, of course, uh, causes a phenomenon known as brain drain, um, which means there's a lack of a mentorship opportunity for uh, future generations. And lastly, we specifically wanted to look at uh, the cost of AI development, and in this case, um, the cost of uh, hiring an AI researcher as a proxy for that development. Um, so we looked at the 2018 developer overstack uh, survey results, and we wanted to plot um, specifically how much it would be uh, to hire an AI developer across different developer types. Uh, what we found here in uh, Latin American and Caribbean countries on average, if you were to have experience in areas of artificial intelligence such as machine learning or data science, on average you would actually uh, make more money than your peers with uh, less years of experience, uh, which is good for anyone interested in getting into artificial intelligence or machine learning. Um, and also potentially uh, good for people who are looking to hire uh, within this area. Uh, the average income uh, for these individuals is between uh, 30,000 and 50,000 uh, per year. Um, that's US dollars. 
So now just to highlight a few um, specific countries uh, on the GER, uh, which I think are very important. Uh, Mexico obviously was in the number one spot according to this ranking. And uh, they do have a, a medium to low uh, unemployment rate, but they also have a very high um, automation potential. Um, this uh, greater than or 50% was actually published by the McKinsey Global Institute uh, research study. And the interesting thing here is that um, because they have been leading the way in a lot of uh, current technological innovation and policy, um, they've actually recently put out the Towards a National Strategy for AI in Mexico that was uh, partially developed uh, as well by CIFR and C-Mines um, and invested in by the uh, UK government. Uh, Uruguay is the next highest ranking on the GER as well. And of course, you're probably familiar uh, with a lot of the work being done there, thanks to uh, Kipu, which took place this past year, uh, which was focused on a uh, Latin American meeting, uh, meeting in education. Uh, they're also a very unique case um, with a smaller uh, population size, and they have a reasonable unemployment rate. I could not find any metrics for their automation potential, um, probably because their population size is much smaller and they do have a more specialized um, economy. Uh, Chile is a very interesting uh, next country to look at, um, specifically within the region of investment and startup capital. Um, a lot of people have referred to Chile as the Chilicon Valley um, because of the investment that they've uh, recently had. Uh, they've actually invested um, over 80 million, oh no, I'm sorry, over 20 million in um, different countries, uh, sorry, in different countries all around the world, uh, specifically for areas of technology and AI startups as well. And a lot of their economic development has been in part due to Corfer, uh, which was developed in 1939 to ensure that their country maintains prosperity uh, in high and low times as well. Uh, Colombia has uh, been one of the fastest growing, actually, in both uh, tech and the AI space um, specifically. They have the fourth largest economy in Latin America, and they also have one of the highest um, automation potential, greater than or equal to uh, 53%, uh, as well as Peru. Um, this can be due to many different factors, um, one being uh, possible their high income inequality at 50.8%. Of course, a lot of this innovation is being run um, by their government and Ruta N, uh, which is the regional innovation agency uh, that was put in place uh, in 2009. Of note, one of the lower ranking countries uh, currently in the GER is Venezuela. And um, those that are familiar with this, uh, the current uh, issues that are going on within this country, it's unfortunate to know that in 2014, their unemployment rate was at about 6%, and now uh, it is currently at 44%, uh, due to a lot of issues that they've had um, with, of course, collecting biometric data, hyperinflation, um, and mismanagement by the government. But prior to that, Venezuela was actually a really wonderful country for technological advancement, and I'd like to highlight a few um, specific individuals who actually furthered uh, this development uh, from their country. So I've noted here uh, Evelyn Morales, uh, who is currently with NASA, uh, Manuel Blum, who uh, actually received the Turing Award, uh, this is in 1995, and uh, Rafael Reif, who is the president of MIT here. And the lowest ranking uh, country of Latin America and Caribbean on the GER is Cuba. And um, I thought this uh, country and its government was uh, very, very unique, um, specifically because uh, they are a very small population and also uh, potentially very highly specialized. And of course, they, uh, their further development has been um, restricted a lot because of the US uh, government and uh, ac lacking access to resources uh, because of uh, those specific impl implementations. Um, so they have actually seen a lot of uh, investment over the past uh, 20 years. Within 1995 to 2000, they had over 473 million in foreign investment. And they actually got legalization of computers and mobile phones in 2008 to give their citizens access to uh, further digital technology. In the Raul Castro administration, they also had the ability, um, over 400,000 citizens had the ability to become entrepreneurs uh, within their country. 
And most recently, in 2020, there was the single window for foreign investment that's being made available so that uh, new investment can come in and further the development uh, of this country. So when a government is thinking about implementing artificial intelligence uh, in their region, I want to make sure you understand what are the key things to consider um, for this development. And of course, that would be automation potential, workforce programs, and data privacy policies. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go in depth here about uh, the advancement potentials and risks, but of course they do need to be considered and weighed um, when you're going to implement this type of technology in a new region. So how can AI help Latin American governments and citizens prosper? Of course, a government needs to really think about the imperatives of harnessing low-cost prediction. And in order to do that, they have to think about these uh, five key ideas. They have to develop a thesis on time to AI impact. They have to recognize that AI progress is going to be exponential. They have to know what they want to predict and implement before they start the process and do that. And of course, once the technology is in place, they have to learn to trust the machines, because these are obviously very, very highly specialized um, machinery and they will want to manage the learning loop uh, throughout the process and maintain control of artificial intelligence technology. So that is my talk for today. I really uh, appreciate your time and I implore you, implore you to join us at the Latinx and AI Coalition. Um, you can, of course, find us on our website, www.latinxnai.com or .org. Um, we will be doing further research in this area of Latin American and Caribbean uh, governments' use of artificial intelligence technology, as well as hosting um, further workshops uh, for researchers that are working in this space at uh, very high-level AI and machine learning conferences. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura.